Good morning. Today we're in 2 Samuel 19, 20, and 21. And it was told Joab, Behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people, for the people heard say that how the day the king was grieved for his son. And the people got them by stealth in that day into the city, as people being ashamed steal away when they flee in battle. But the king covereth his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, O my son Absalom, O Absalom, my son, my son. And Joab came into the house of the king and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all the servants, which this day has saved thy life, and the lives of the sons and the daughters, and the lives of thy wives, and the lives of thy concubines, in that thou lovest thine enemies, and hatest thy friends. For thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants, nor day I perceive that if Absalom had lived and we had all died this day, then it had pleased thee well. Now therefore arise, go forth, and speak comfortably unto thy servants. For I swear by the Lord, if thou go not forth, there will not tarry one with thee this night, that thou will be worse unto thee than all the evil that befell thee from the youth until now. Then the king arose and sat in the gate, and they told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king doth sit in the gate. And all the people came before the king, for Israel had fled every man to his tent. And all the people were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king has saved us out of the hand of our enemies, and delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines, and now he has fled out of the land for Absalom. And Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now therefore, why speak ye not a word of bringing King King back? And King David sent Zadok and Abithiar the priest, saying unto the elders of Judah, saying, Why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house, seeing the speech of all Israel is come to the king, even to his house? Ye are my brethren, ye are my bones and my flesh. Wherefore then are ye the last? Sorry about that. I don't my computer scrolled down. Let me find where we were all right verse 12 ye are my brethren ye are my bones and my flesh wherefore then are ye the last to bring back the king and say ye to Amasa art thou not of my bone and of my flesh God do so to me and more also if thou be not the captain of the host before me continually in the room of Joab and he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah, even as the heart of one man, so that they sent his word unto the king, Return thou and thy servants. And the king returned and came to Jordan, and Judah came to Gilgal to go to meet the king, conduct the king over Jordan. And Shemaiah, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, which was Behirim, hasted and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. And there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Zeba the servant of the house of Saul, and the fifteen sons of his twenty servants with him. And they went over Jordan before the king. And there went over a ferry boat to carry over the king's household, and to do what he thought good. And Shemaiah the son of Gera fell down before the king as he was come over Jordan, and said unto the king, Let not my lord impute iniquity unto me, neither do thou remember which the servant did perversely, that they... My lord the king went out of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. For thy servant doth know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I am come this first day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my lord the king. But Abishai, the son of Zariah, answered and said, Shall not Shemaiah be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? And David said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruah, that today be adversaries unto me, that there be any man be put to death this day in Israel? For do not I know that this I am this day king over Israel? Therefore the king said unto Shemaiah, Thou shalt not die, and the king swear unto him. And Mahabahobah the son of Saul, came down to meet the king, and had neither dressed his feet, nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes, from the day the king departed to the day that he came again in peace. And it came to pass, when he was come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Wherefore wentest not thou with me, Methabosheth? And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant, deceive me. For the servant said, I will saddle me an ass, and I will ride thereon, and go to the king, because thy servant is lame. And he has slandered thy servant unto my lord the king. The lord 
The king is as an angel of God. Do therefore what is good in thine eyes. For all my father's house were but dead men before the Lord my king. The thou deceptive servant among them that did eat at thine own table. What right therefore have I yet to cry any more unto the king? And the king said unto him, Why speakest thou any more of thy matters? I have said thou and Ziba divide the land. And Methabosheth said unto the king, Yea, let him take all, for as much as the Lord the king has come again in peace into his own house. And Barzillia the Gilead came down from Rogelum and went over Jordan with the king to conduct him over Jordan. Now Barzillia was a very aged man, even fourscore years old, and he had provided the king of sustenance while he lay at Manahem, for he was very great man. And the king said unto Barzillia, Come thou over with me, and I will feed thee with me in Jerusalem. And Barzillia said unto the king, How long have I to live, that I should go up with the king unto Jerusalem? I am this day fourscore years old, and I can, and can I discern between good and evil? Can thy servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? Wherefore then should thy servant be yet a burden unto my lord the king? Thy servant will go a little way over Jordan with the king, and why should the king recompense it with me with such a ward? Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again, that I might die in my own city, and be buried by the grave of my father and my mother. And behold, thy servant Chiham, let him go over with the Lord my king, and do to him what shall seem good unto thee. And the king answered, Chiham shall go over with me, and I will do to him that which shall seem good unto thee. And whatsoever thou shalt require of me, that will I do for thee. And all the people went over Jordan, and when the king was come over, the king kissed Barzillia and blessed him, and returned into his own place. Then the king went on to Gilgal, and Chimia went on with him. And all the people of Judah conducted the king, and also half of the people of Israel. And behold, all the men of Israel came to the king, and said unto the king, why have our brethren, the men of Judah, stolen thee away, and have brought the king and his household and all David's men with him over Jordan? And all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is near of kin to us. Wherefore then be ye angry for this matter? Have we eaten at all of the king's cost, or hath he given us any gift? And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah and said, We have ten parts in the king, and we have also more right in David than ye. Why then did you despise us that our advice should not be first had be brought back in our king? That the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel? Chapter 20, And there happened to be a there man of Belial whose name was Sheba and the son of Bichri and Benjamite, and he blew a trumpet and said, We have no part in David, neither have we any inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tent, O Israel. So every man of Israel went up from after David and followed Sheba, the son of Bichri. But the men of Judah clave unto their king from Jordan, even to Jerusalem. And David came to his house at Jerusalem. And the king took the ten women, his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house, and put them inward, and fed them, but went not in unto them. So they were shut up in the day to their death, living in widowhood. Then said the king Amasa, Assemble me the men of Judah within three days, and be thou here present. So Amasa went to assemble the men of Judah, but he tarried longer than the set time which he had appointed him. And David said to Abishai, Now shall Sheba the son of Bichri do us more harm than did Absalom. Take thou thy lord's servants, and pursue after him, lest he get him fenced cities, and escape us. And there went after him Joab's men, and the Cherethites, the Pelethites, the mighty men. They went out of Jerusalem to pursue after Sheba the son of Bichri. And when they were at the great stone which is in Gibeon, Amasa went before them, and Joab's garment that he had put on was girded upon him, and it Upon it a girdle with a sword, fastened upon his loins in the sheath thereof, and as he went forth it fell out. And Joab said to Amasa, Art thou in health, my brother? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with the right hand to kiss him, but Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand. So he smote him therewith in the fifth rib, and shed out his bowels to the ground, and struck him not again, and he died. So Joab and Abishai his brother pursued after Sheba the son of Bichri. And one of Joab's men stood by him, and he said, He that favors Joab, he that is for David, let him go after Joab. And Amasa wallowed in blood in the midst of the highway, and when the man saw that all the people should steal, he removed Amasa of the highway in the field and cast a cloth upon him. 
when he saw that everyone that came by him stood still. But he was removed out of the highway, and all the people went on after Joab to pursue Sheba, the son of Bichri. And he went through the tribes of Israel into Abel, to Bethamach, and to the Barites, that they were gathered together, and went also after him. And they came and besieged him, and Abel, Abel the Bethmaha, and they cast up a bank against the city, and it stood in a trench, and all the people that were with Joab battered the wall to throw it down. Then cried a wise woman out of the city, Hear, hear, and say, I pray you unto Joab, come here nither that I speak with thee. And he was coming to her. The woman said, Art thou Joab? And he answered, I am he. And then she said unto him, Hear the words of thy handmaid. And he answered, I do hear. Then she spake, saying, They won't, they're, they were wont to speak at old times, saying, They shall surely ask counsel at Abel. And so they ended the matter. I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. Thou seekest to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why wilt thou swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? And Joab answered and said, Far be it, far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. The matter is not so, but a man of Mount Ephraim, Sheba the son of Bechri by name, hath lifted up his hand against the king, even against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. And the woman said unto Joab, Behold, his head shall be thrown up to thee over the wall. Then the woman went up unto all the people in her wisdom, and they cut off the head of Sheba the son of Bichri, and cast it out to Joab, and he blew a trumpet, and they retired from the city, every man to his tent. And Joab returned to Jerusalem and to the king. Now Joab was over the host of Israel, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over the Cherethites and over the Pelethites. And Adoram was over the tribute, and Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat the son of Eliad was the recorder. And Sheva was scribe, and Zadok and Abithiar were priests, and Ira the, also the Jairite was a chief ruler about David. In chapter 21, then there was a famine in the days, three years, year after year, and David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is for Saul, it is for Bloody House, because he slew Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites, and the children of Israel had sworn unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Judah and Israel. Wherefore David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you, and wherewith shall I make atonement, that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver, nor gold of Saul, nor his house, neither for us kill any man in Israel. And he said, What shall you say that I what will I do for you? And they answered the king, The man that consumed us and devised against us that we should be destroyed from the remaining of any coast of Israel, let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord and give them a Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mehebeth, the son of Jonathan, son of Saul, because the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan and the son of Saul. But the king took two sons of Rippus, the daughter of Ahi, whom she bare unto Saul, Armani, Mehebesheth, and the five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Mehelothite. And he delivered him into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged him in the hill before the Lord, and they all, and they fell all seven together, and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days in the beginning of barley harvest. And Rizpah, the daughter of Ahi, took sackcloth, and spread it for her upon the rock in the beginning of the harvest until the water dropped upon them out of heaven, and suffered neither the birds of the air to rest on them by day, nor the beasts of the field by night. And it was told David what Rizpah, the daughter of Ahi, the concubine of Saul, had done. And David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son from the men of Gabesh Gilead, which had stolen them from the street of Basan, where the Philistines had hanged him, and the Philistines had slain Saul and Gilboa. And he brought up from thence the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son, and they gathered the bones of them that were hanged. And the bones of Saul and Jonathan his son buried they in the country of Benjamin the Zelah, in the sepulchre of Kish his father, and they performed all that the king commanded. And after that God was entreated for the land. Moreover the Philistines had yet war again with Israel, and David went down and his servants with him, and fought against the Philistines, and David waxed faint. And Ishbenonob was the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed three hundred shekels in brass and weight. He, being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. 
But Abishai, the son of Zariah, secured him, and smote the Philistine, and killed him. Then the men of David swear unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out to battle with us, thou quench not the light of Israel. And it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sabichai the Hushathite slew Saph, which was the sons of the giant. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanah, the son of Jerugim, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers, and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he was also born to the giant. And when he defiled Israel, Jonathan the son of Shemir, the brother of David, slew him. These four were born to the giant in Gath, and fell by the hand of David, and by the hand of his servants. <laughs>